Hey, I'm Ray Scott, and I'm coming at you live from uh, Warner Brothers Records. I'm a writer-artist, uh, brand new on Warner Brothers Records, Nashville. Well, I got started uh, mainly because my dad was a country singer when I was a kid, and I get it honest, and it was kind of a bug that bit me when I was a little kid. So, uh, you know, it was always there. It was, there was no chance I was going to end up trying to do anything else. So, uh, uh, you know, when I got out of high school, I joined my first band. That was in the Raleigh, North Carolina area. Got to, you know, really seriously trying to write songs for a while there. And, uh, you know, decided after realizing I didn't know much about the business side of things to go to a school called uh, the Music Business Institute, and that was in Atlanta, Georgia. And I got a little two-year degree down there, and then I ended up in Nashville in October of 94, and uh, I've been here ever since. Yeah, you know, I mean, a lot of what I was doing when I first got to Nashville was just kind of soaking it all up, you know, and really taking it in and seeing what was out there, who was out there. I realized before I moved to town that it was going to be a different game once I got here, you know, and, I, and that really hit me like a ton of bricks, too. I mean, the first guy I saw when I got to town uh, was after a few weeks, I saw Skip Ewing play at a, like a, a bagel shop. And, uh, you know, I realized, God, this guy is one of the greatest songwriters I've heard, you know, and I saw Don Schlitz not too long after that. Of course, he wrote a lot of big uh, Kenny Rogers hits like The Gambler and, you know, just staples in country music. and. And I just, uh, you know, began to realize, okay, you're not as good as you thought you were when you got here. You need to get to work. And so, uh, you know, I just took it all in, you know, and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote. And I just tried to work on it and, and get better at it. And it took a lot longer than I thought it would. Uh, but, uh, you know, you have to realize that the first thing you have to do is just realize uh, where you are uh, as far as uh, your abilities go. And you have to be honest with yourself and say, okay, I'm not that good yet. Here's the bar. I'm right here, you know, or whatever. So uh, that, that's that's one key. And I, I was at least able to do that and, and uh, you know, be realistic with myself. I don't know if I could sit here and honestly tell you I've exceeded the level of, of the bar. You know, I mean, I think that once you rest on your laurels and you're finished, um, I think that I continue uh, to get better every day, whether it be through a just a technical uh, through the technical sense or just, uh, you know, uh, I, I've evolved. I know that. I mean, and I think I started figuring out what makes a good song a good song uh, a while back. And But, you know, you can't sit down and write a great song every time. You can sit down and craft a song that is uh, quality from start to finish. But there's only a really small percentage of them that are ever going to be uh, special, you know. And you're lucky to ever get one. Um, but... Uh, you know, I, I think it's it's uh, the skill of recognizing that, and and uh, you know, I don't know, but like I say, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that I've got it figured out because you know, the next guy's going to kick my ass off the stool just as soon as I do it. It's hard to explain, really. I mean, I, I think uh, it's intangible, really. Um, it's just got to, you know, it's got to do something for you when you listen to it. It's got to move you in some way. You know, you got to you got to feel something from it. You know. Um, and there's lots of different types of songs that can do that, you know. Um, and there's really no set uh, method to it, you know, because if, if there were, everybody would be doing it. Um, but I think you just know it when you hear it, period. Uh, my music is, uh, you know, I got here in the early 90s, when uh, you know, early to mid-90s, when country was booming. And, you know, so I was influenced by a lot of what was happening then, or at least... A lot of what I was hearing on the radio kind of lit me up and said, man, I, you know, I can do that. that. That would be, you know, but I had these aspirations and dreams when I was younger. Um, uh, and I grew up, um, you know, the first part of my life was spent in the 70s. And, and some of my fondest memories or, you know, biggest memories anyway were of, uh, you know, people like Waylon Jennings and Johnny Cash and Willie Nelson, Merle Haggard, you know. Uh, you know, not too long after that, I started getting into songwriters like Chris Christopherson, Billy Joe Shaver. You know, John Prine, John Hyde, I mean, the list goes on. And, um, you know, there was a certain, uh, you know, authority and a certain realness in uh, the type of stuff those guys did that, uh, you know, that really turned me on and really got under my skin. And, and you know, essentially uh, what I'm doing now, what I'm trying to do anyway, what I'm setting out to do is uh, the same type of thing, the same type of earthy, hey, this guy's real, he's telling it like it is. Uh, you know, there's no BS going on here, and he's not standing up there singing a song for the sake of trying to be famous, you know. He's singing a song about something that matters to him or something that, that uh, tickles him, you know, or something that, you know, just floats my boat, you know. And um, I mean, that that's that's what I'm in it for. And, you know, so I, I think, uh, you know, 
I'm really largely influenced by a lot of the guys from back then and a lot of the, you know, the rock and the southern rock and whatnot that was happening then too, like Skinner and, I mean, the list goes on. Uh, but, uh, and, you know, you can't help but be influenced by what you heard when you were a kid, you know. I mean, when I was in high school, it was all ACDC and Led Zeppelin and, and Skinner and all that stuff where I grew up in Carolina. So, um, you know, obviously those influences are there. Um, you know, and what I'm doing now, is, I think, is just an extension of that. Uh, it's modern because, you know, here we are in 2006. Uh, you know, the way we approach production, uh, the way we approach mixing uh, is different now than it used to be back then. So there's a little more energy on the tracks, I think, than what you might be used to from way back. But, uh, but you know, the, the simpleton approach to, to tracking it is kind of what we take. You know, we try to keep it as sparse as possible. And, uh, you know, we don't want to fill it up with a bunch of stuff we don't need. You know, we don't need the, the Phil Spector wall of sound, you know, or whatever. Um, that worked for some people, you know. Uh, it's, you know, different strokes, different folks. Do you have a band that you play with? Or is I do, yeah. Yeah, I've got a, a, a core of guys that we go out and tour with. Uh, you know, I've got a drummer that's worked with, uh, you know, he was on the road with Charlie Daniels for 13 years, you know. and He's great, you know, I mean, really slams him. You know, my steel player at this point, uh, he played for Brooks and Dunn for a long time, you know, so I've got some quality guys. Um, one of the main guys in the band is the electric guitar player, a guy by the name of Philip Moore, who uh, who I've been writing songs with for, God, probably seven years, and, and uh, you know, he's a great guitar player. You know, we kind of came up through the ranks here together. You know, we've had some cuts on other artists as songwriters together, you know, and we just kind of set out to do our thing, you know, a long time ago. And he really believed in what I was doing and, and uh, got behind it and put his eggs in this basket. And, and all these years later, here he is with uh, a co-write on most of the songs on my record. And he's also the co-producer of it. So, uh, you know, and he's, his guitar playing is what creates a big part of my sound that, that I think sets it apart from, from some others. So, uh, you know. He's a great addition, and you know, if not, you know, if it hadn't been for him, you know, I don't, I don't know if I would be at this point right now. Well, Nashville is known first and foremost as a songwriting community. I mean, it's known as the home of country music or whatever. But a lot of people come from all over the world because they know that song. You know, this place is known for songwriting, and if uh, if there's a chance in hell of you making it as a songwriter, you might want to move to Nashville. You know, I mean, uh, there's certain types of music that if you write. Uh, you know, if you write a certain type of music, if, if you're here writing, uh, you know, a techno punk or something like that, it's a good chance you might not make it in Nashville. But if, uh, you know, anything but you know anything that runs the uh, gamut from country to pop, I mean, there's a lot of people here uh, doing pretty good, you know. So, uh, so yeah, if, if, you know, somebody told me a long time ago, man, if you want to write songs and you're serious about it and you want to make money at it and make a career of it, move to Nashville, uh, no question you got to do that. I mean, there's really no way. I mean, I don't really know of many people who have made it as a songwriter, um, you know, and and, and uh, did business through Nashville if they didn't live in Nashville. So, uh, you know, that's the first thing I would tell anybody is you got to get your butt to town, you know, or you're just wasting your time. Man, you know, it all depends on what you want, uh, what, what you want your career to be. Um, you know, in this day and age, the way it is changing, uh, the, the fact that the internet is out there, and uh, there's a lot of people I know of that are uh, doing good on, on a certain level. Um, and, you know, it just, I think at this point, it's kind of like the difference in signing an indie deal or an indie, you know, independent record label deal and a major label deal. You know, I mean, obviously, uh, with an indie deal, you're going to make more money on, on a record uh, in the return uh, quicker. Um, but at the same time, your distribution uh, and your promotional dollars and everything else uh, that help you get out there aren't going to be near as big as what a major label would have to spend on you to get, you know. So it, the level of success you achieve, you know, depending on what that is that you want, um, has got a lot to do with that decision. You know, uh, you know, I could, I could make a record on Pro Tools at home and, uh, you know, sell it through the internet or whatever. You know, and if I'm making ten bucks a record, you know, I might sell ten thousand records, and and uh, that'd be considered a success. But it's still more of a an underground kind of a, you know, maybe uh, I don't know, more of a cultish kind of thing. You know, and there's a lot of that going on. But uh, you know, it, like I said, I mean, it just depends on on uh, you know how big you want to be. You know, how how 
widespread you want to be, how much of the world you want to hear it, you know. Yeah, I've got a MySpace. Yeah, the, the girls here in New Media at Warner Brothers do a great job, and, you know, they actually had my website built as well, which is racegod.com. Go check it out. Um, uh, but I have myspace.com as well. And they, they, you know, every outlet that they can think of on the Internet, they really do a good job of uh, – see, that's another advantage of being a major. You know, if you want people, if you want people to see you, if you want people to hear you, you know, I mean, you got a big team of people uh, at a major label working on a daily basis – to make that happen you know if you're doing it at home by yourself you don't have time to do all this trust me especially if you're you know out there actually doing what uh, the important thing is and playing music you know writing songs or or whatever so uh yeah um yeah that's been a big presence for us go sell shoes no just kidding um I, you know I would just say you know if you really you know if you've got it in your head and your heart that you know you can do this and uh, you know, Alan Jackson said something uh, that I find to be very true a long time ago when somebody was asking him about his career and whatnot. He said that, you know, he moved to Nashville because he was, I forget the words exactly, but it was like, uh, you know, he was stupid enough or naive enough to think he could make it. And there's a lot of wisdom there because, uh, you know, a lot of times people move to town. And I had a little bit of a, you know, a preparation for this because I went to school and I had people who knew of, how the business worked and everything. So I got some warnings, you know, some forewarnings. But, you know, you, you just got to know it. You got to have no doubt in your mind. And there are a lot of people that move to town that feel that way. And uh, you got to realize that, too. And, um, and when you get to town, or you know, whether it be here in New York, California, wherever you go, you got to realize that there are thousands and thousands of other people trying to do the same thing you are. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I think, number one, you can't make, make a plan B. I know mom and dad say, hey, yeah, you got to have a plan B, whatever, uh, but that's BS. You know, I mean, I think uh, y you make a plan B, then you're going to default to plan B. Uh, you know, you're going to give up too quick. And uh, so, I mean, you got to think, okay, it's this or nothing. You know, you can give yourself a, a, a plan, you know, where, you know, I came here and I thought, okay, I'll give it a 10-year plan, you know. I had a guy tell me, it was a really great businessman, he said, I don't care if you're selling you know, bicycles or whatever it is, you know, if you're going to go into business for yourself, which essentially that's what we're doing here, um, you got to make a 10 year plan. You got to, you know, make little goals and accomplish those goals as you go. And you just basically, you can't expect things to come before that. You know, you can't expect, you know, you, know, you got to plant your seeds and you can't, you got to sow them and you can't expect to reap the benefits for a, a good while, you know, and so 10 years is a good. A span of time to give it and uh, so I did that I told myself that and uh, you know it just so happens that you know six years into town I got my first cut as a songwriter um, you know then I got a couple more seven or eight years after that and then I think it was my ninth year in town I you know I signed the record deal and made a record for Warner Brothers so you know we're pretty much on course I've been here now for over 11 but uh, you know so I mean it you know it holds true you know, and I think at the, at the end of the day, just keep writing, keep singing, whatever it is you do, keep performing and keep, uh, you know, make a promise to yourself to get better every day and never wake up in the morning thinking I've already figured it out.